I've gone through a lot in my life, and I often struggle with being able to hold on to positive relationships. But I know that it's not always easy. So I'm sending a love story in and hope that others can learn from it as well. Because her husband was away on business while raising me, she took care of the restaurant while adjusting to my needs. My mom was so busy that she had no time to take a break and make sure I am eating the healthiest food. Even when she had a busy day, my mom would be able to make sure my schoolwork is being done well. Thanks to her, I had a lot less grades behind me, and never wanted anything material. However, the absence of a father must have bothered me greatly because I always wanted to get married as soon as possible to build a good family of my own. As soon as I graduated from college, I met my husband at the company. I worked, even though we dated for two years, I didn't have any wish to marry my husband because he wasn't my ideal. But he was so aggressive and tenacious toward me that I was sort of dragged into dating him. Thus, when he brought on marriage, I hesitated. When I evaded the subject, my husband said, Janice, you know, all I have is you. I'm confident that I will do well when we get married. I will act like a son to my mother-in-law, and I will be good to you too. He hadn't yet met my mom, but when he addressed her as his mother-in-law, it was strange, but it felt good to hear it other than my husband not being my type. There was another reason for my reluctance. I didn't have a father, and from what I heard, the rumor was that my husband's mother was very picky about family background. I was sad enough that I grew up without a father. So I didn't want that to be something that I would be judged by other people. I guess my husband knew how I felt. He said my mom is sort of picky, but she has a warm heart and is very understanding of other people. Every family has their own private situation, so she wouldn't just oppose someone because of having no father in the family. I became very flustered. I haven't met your mom yet, so how would I know what kind of person she? I don't have any bad opinion about your mom. Marriage is one of the most important matter in life, so I just want to be careful. I just made up an excuse and passed it over. In truth, my husband liked to go out with his friends to rowdy drinking places, but I prefer to stay home and have our own private time rather than going around in groups. Those points also bothered. However he kept trying to persuade me. I will reduce my going out drinking with my paws and do as you want. I will go grocery shopping with you during weekends and I will be able to read books and do cooking with you. Yes, I could do that really. Eventually, I got persuaded by him. I vowed to myself that I would not let him tang me into marrying him. But what made me waver was because I thought, who would love me so much like my husband? So when my husband came to my house to meet with my mom, she held his hands tight and said, Janice has grown up without a father. So she's a very lonely child. I hope you will feel that loneliness for her. When she said that, my tears welled. I didn't know she knew I was lonely. I had been trying not to show that to her, but as always, my mom knew everything about me, and I felt a pang in my heart. After my husband came over to my house, I went to his house. I bought a whole bunch of gifts, including some expensive supplements for health and of perfume. I felt very nervous, but my future mother-in-law wasn't that picky as a. My son's father passed away when he was in high school, and I have been a widow ever since. So if I was picky about that, that would make me out to be a strange person, wouldn't I? I think your mother is great for raising a fine daughter like you. When she said that, I felt very relieved. My mother-in-law seemed to be very interested when she heard that my mom operated a large re. At that time, I didn't know that paying attention to the family background meant it was checking on the financial status, so I thought she was just complimenting my mom. Our marriage proceeded quickly and we chose a fine day in the fall to have our wedding during our newly wet. My husband showed his devotion, and even though he liked to go out and hang around with his friends, he tried to spend the weekend with me. His mother also did not demand unreasonable things from. I did go and see her on my own every weekend, but unless there was a big family event or chores, she let me be free. 
but those free time lasted for only three years after we got married. As the saying goes that a person cannot be changed, my husband started to spend more time out steadily. I understood that it was too restricting to be at home and he could go out drinking with his buddies. However, he went out every day to go out drinking with his friends. At first, I thought that he was a person who liked to drink with his friends, so staying at home must have been too stuffy for him. But he went back to his original self where he would just book a condo somewhere for the whole weekend and spend time away from home. In the meantime, there was a problem with my mom, because my mom had co-signed for her friend that went wrong, and she had to give up her successful restaurant to the debtor, and from the shock she became ill after being depressed for a while, rather than paying attention on my husband, I had to pay a full attention to my mom as I went back and forth to my mom's house often. Then my mother-in-law told me that she was having her friends over and told me, come to her house to roast some beef. Mother, could you go out to eat? This time. That day is the date that I made an appointment at the hospital for my mom. She's not well, so she needs a major examination and testing. I will pay for a dinner. Then she says, Sar. Do you think, I have no money, so I'm asking you to roast beef. If I happen that lenient with you all this time, I want you to act like a daughter-in-law. Why is it that you only care about your mother even though you're married now and you got into a habit of spending your husband's money to show off to your mother? I was so shocked that I was speechless. Her attitude was so different then. Also, I had never neglected my role as a daughter-in-law and I only needed to accompany my mom to the hospital because she had no one to go with her. But for her to say it that way was simply too shocking to me. My mom said she must have felt hurt. Why don't you go to your mother-in-law's house? I could go to the hospital by myself. I'm old enough. Don't you think I could take care of myself, mom, it's not that. It's okay. So let's go to the hospital together. I have never acted without manners to my mother-in-law, and I don't think it's right to complain when I'm taking you to the hospital because you're sick. We are not living in the Victorian era, so how could she stop me from taking care of my sing mother? I could just do something for her. Another time. I insisted and took my mom to the hospital. If I hadn't done that, I would have regretted for the rest of my life. My mom had stomach cancer and it was at a very dangerous stage. I believe it was just too much for her. When her friend went into hiding and collateralized restaurant got transferred to someone else. When I helped my mom and sobbed, my mom said, I will be okay. I won't die that easily. I still haven't seen my grandchild in my. So do you think I will go before then? I couldn't die like this, never. I just need an operation and get treated. She can afford it me instead. While my mom went through an operation and got chemotherapy, my mother-in-law never once contact me. My husband didn't come to the hospital either. Whenever she had time, my mother-in-law complains about the time that I didn't come over to do the cooking for her. These days, brides disrespect their in-laws and live freely as they wish for their own comfort. Only either Janice hasn't had a proper raising because of growing up without a father, or she is just a brat. She would blatantly degrade my family without any hesitation. She was so different than when I first met her, when our restaurant got taken over by someone else, and my mom started to struggle with financial problem. I think she thought that she could treat me that way since she could have no benefits from us. I used to pay for her when she went to a very expensive hair salon. The owner of the hair salon said, how could a person change like that overnight? I had her rumors before that she was a person who was very greedy and cared only about money, but when she was nice to you, I thought it must have been just rumors about her, but it was all true. I'm just telling you that because I feel so sorry for you. She told me that she talked badly about my mom and complained that I became painless. There's nothing about her family. I thought at least her mom had money, so my son might benefit from that, but now they are totally painless. Why should we do if we have to take care of them? My mother-in-law was very upset and said that in the 
Since she knew that I dropped by the salon once a month to pay her bills, I felt that she said that for me to hear about it on purpose. My husband was the same as his mother and did not bat an eye. I felt so hurt that I could only cry and I wanted to get divorced immediately, but I couldn't have my mom worry about me if my mom thought it was all cost. When a restaurant was lost, I didn't think my mom would recover from. So I just had to swallow it and put it off. For now, I only paid attention to take care of my mom, even though I had to enjoy my mother-in-law's ridiculous nagging and my husband's neglect while he was out drinking and into his friends. But whether my care wasn't enough, my mom's health deteriorated and eventually she passed away. Whenever I think about that day, I have such a deep heart. That day, my mother-in-law complained to me that she had nothing to eat and demanded that I come over to prepare some dishes. I wanted to stay with my mom since her condition was so terrible. But I thought my mother-in-law would badmouth my mom again and nag. So I reluctantly bought some groceries and went over to her house. I was going to prepare some dishes quickly and go back to the hospital, but she kept insisting that I set the table. It would taste good to eat the pasta right away when it's hot. So you set the table, mother. I will just do the serving, but I need to leave because my mom is not well at all. Aren't there a lot of doctors and nurses, even if it's not you, there are a lot of people who will care for your mom, even if you're there. Why could you do for her? You would just be in the way. Why don't you do just a half of what you do to care for your mom and care for me? What's left there from your mom who's heavy and dead? I will set the table. So don't talk that way. Is my mom only a mother when she has money? I got upset and retarded. Then she glared at me. I ignored her and set the table. Then I got a call from the hospital that my mom passed away. No, mom. No. See what happened. It's because of you that I had to make the food for you that I couldn't be by her. On the deathbed, look what's happened. I started crying and yelling and ran out of my mother-in-law's house to go to the hospital, completely dazed. I still don't remember how I got to the hospital. I just held on to my mom's dead body and sobbed out. However, my husband did not come and appeared only after the funeral was over. I had lost all my feelings for him, so I wasn't even angry. I couldn't be by my mother's side, so what could I say to my husband? My husband seemed to be impatient to leave the funeral, and my mother-in-law stayed at the funeral on the second day, only briefly, and left without eating anything. Then the next day she called me to come over to help with cooking again. Because I had just made some food before and still there was a lot left. I thought it was just her scheme to disrespect my mom and me. I didn't say anything and just hung up the phone and finished my mom's funeral after the burial. When I came home, my mother-in-law was at our house. Then she did the most bizarre act. As soon as I got into the front door, she poured a ball of salt on. Hey, get out of here. You are painless lots, yet you disrespect your mother-in-law. So I have no desire to have a daughter-in-law like you, so get out of my house. I don't want the bad spirit from your damn mother to haunt our house. So turn around and just get out with the salts all over me. I stood and looked at my husband who was just sitting on a sofa behind his. Then without any expression, he took off his shirt and laid down on the sofa and turned on the TV. My mother-in-law put my husband's shirt into a plastic bag, then threw it at me, shouting, take that with you as you go out. It's a bad luck as it came from the funeral, so take those with you. My husband didn't attempt to stop his mom and looked as if he was sick of it and just turned up the volume on the TV. Because I was so exhausted from the funeral together with the sadness since my mom's death, I had no energy to fight with my mother-in-law and my husband. However, I thought I couldn't live in this household any longer. I pushed aside my mother-in-law who tried to stop me from entering and went into the bad room and packed my stuff quickly and... I stayed at my friend's house and spent time just crying. I was sad that my mom passed away, 
and I was very angry at how my husband and my mother-in-law treated me because my mom was no longer with me. However, I couldn't remain just like that, so I gathered every penny I had and rented a small studio and started looking for a job, even though I had a good job before. With that recent work history, there was no company that would offer me a. Then with my friend's recommendation, I started working in the administrative office at a nursing home because the work wasn't hard work for me. I didn't have any difficulty getting adjusted. I worked really hard as I was trying to stand on my own two feet. My ex-husband came to see me several times. It's enough now, so you should come back until when are you going to stay outside like this? And P. Why should I return to your family? Who says I bring bad luck because of my mom's funeral? Don't pretend you're thinking of me and just sign the divorce papers. You're only looking for someone to cook for you when you come home drunk and make food for your mom. Let my husband just frown and left. A few days later, he sent back the divorce papers signed, so that's how my husband and I got divorced and I even worked harder at the nursing home. Even though it wasn't my responsibility, I helped clean the area that the seniors used together and became their friend to talk with. Once in a while, whenever I saw them, they reminded me of my mother, so it made me give them a second look to see what I could do for them. The nursing home director was impressed with me and gave me a separate bonus. Janice, you have a lot to do, but you do them so well and still find the time to take care of the elders. So I'm very grateful. It's my job. My parents divorced when I was very young and my mom just passed away not too long ago. I feel like they are my parents, so I'm just doing it because they want to. I didn't know that. However, it's not that easy to try to please everyone as if they are your parents. You must be born that. Why not try to get a license to become a nursing home director? I did not think about that, but I thought it would be good if the director guided me and I followed her instructions, studying hard accordingly, and got my certification as a social worker. Then I finished the courses to become a nursing home director. My boss certified the hours I needed by validating the experience I received from taking care of the elders while I worked in the admin office and had me manage other social workers, I really worked hard at it. I paid closer attention to the elders and their environments and within the allowed budget I tried to get them the best quality items. I guess it was effective and soon the reputation that our nursing home was great started to spread and people who wanted to enter our nursing home increased a lot more than before. Then a man around in his 50s came to see me one day. I thought he came to inquire about emitting his parents, but he asked, are you Janice Anderson? I'm the attorney for Mr. Alan Thorpe. Mr. Alan Thorpe. Oh, is that elderly sin? Yes. He passed away from here not too long ago. That elderly man was someone that I had paid special attention because if I had my dad, I thought he would be around the same age. So whenever I was just doing the administrative work, I stopped by often to help him wash his face and put on the lotion on his face. I would take him outside in his wheelchair and put sunscreen on his face, and we went out often. The attorney told me that he had a lot of property. He didn't have any children, so originally he was going to donate everything to a non-profit organization, but before he passed away, he changed his will and left 20% of his assets in your name. The money he left me amounted to approximately 5 million. It was so unexpected that I didn't know what to do. During that time, my nursing home director had a lot of worries about improving the facilities and expanding it, so I decided to invest partly in the nursing home. Janice, would that be okay? I don't know how it will turn out in the future. So wouldn't it be a loss for you? How could I spend it better than here? You helped me a lot when I was having a hard time. I'm glad that I could be helpful in this. For someone so young like you, it's my first time meeting someone who's so loyal as you. Thank you, Janice. Let's try our hardest together. My director had tears in her eyes and held my hands warmly, so she and I bought a building next to ours and we increased a number of hospital rooms and several facilities so that we could amend more elderly people we couldn't accept due to lack of rooms. 
Then the image of our nursing home improved as well. Then one day my husband called me, how are you doing? Honey, I heard that you're now managing the nursing home. It seems that everything worked out well for you. I don't know where you heard that, but it's none of your business. You shouldn't address me, honey. I'm not your honey. When I scorned him, he couldn't say anything more and hung up there. Then a few days later, my ex-mother-in-law came to see me at the nursing home. I didn't want to meet with her, but she boldly pushed her way into my office and plopped down on the floor wheeling about her poor situation, oh my. They tell me that I have cancer. Please save me. She was holding on to me begging that I could only sigh. I heard that your nursing home has an excellent facility and has very good food. Please let me be admitted. You cannot be admitted here. What do you mean? Since you are managing here, you can use your connections. Think of our past together. No, we have priorities and you are out of that priority. Just get admitted to a hospital. But the hospital says that I'm not that level to be hospitalized. Why are you addressing me that quote, Lee? I have nothing to be affectionately connected with. When I think about the time when my mom was sick, it breaks my heart because of you. I couldn't even be by my mother's deathbed. So now you come to see me so that you can live more comfortably and demand to be admitted here. Don't you have any conscience? There is no place for someone like you who are so capable and healthy, who can go around and boast if you have a beginning stage of thyroid cancer. If you get treated diligently, you should recover. I wonder why God has taken my mom who's in nothing but work hard and live kindly, but someone like you who is in the habit of using other people well, God must have needed good people. I try to think you look down on people with no money. I don't even have anyone. I could introduce someone like you, so I hope you understand. I turned around coldly, but she held on to my sleeves and said, why do you keep bringing up the past? I became so angry and was going to say something when the door opened and my director came into my office and poured a bald salt over my mother-in-law. This is my first time doing this to someone who claims she's sick, but you shouldn't live this way if you have any conscience. You kicked out your daughter-in-law when she came home from the funeral, and yet how could you come here and demand her to admit you? Then the people who heard that outside on the first floor all stared at my mother-in-law and started to whisper how could she be that thick face if she's that sick, let her son take care of her. Then my mother-in-law hit her face and rushed out among the people. My director apologized to the people for the noise and settled to matter. It's too bad that my ex-mother-in-law became sick, but I felt avenged, however, in comparison to what she did to me when my mom was dying, it was nothing after that incident. My mother-in-law nor my husband contact me again. Later, I found out that my ex-mother-in-law went through several social workers and aides, and because no one wanted to help her, she came to see me. She was mean to everyone and was being disrespectful of the help they. I am not sure if she was being punished for her acts, but because she could find no one to care for her. I heard nothing further after that. I work with a director at the same nursing home. I just met someone nice and we are dating. Whether or not we get married remains to be seen. I'm simply going to work hard and hope I'll get better opportunities down the line. Thank you for listening, I hope that all of you are well. I know that your opinion can really change someone's life and it's greatly appreciated if you took the time to share your thoughts and opinions with me. A big thanks to my subscribers, press the subscribe button now and amp, have a wonderful day.